Whilst number 41157 was destined for the scrap heap in 1960, the first of the line, number 41000, was destined to live on. Here we see her in her final British Railways guise at Crew Works before being taken to Derby for a complete overhaul and restoration. Here she was subjected to an effective rebuild rather than simple overhaul. It was not the first time she'd been rebuilt. The history of the Midland compounds is long and complicated. The Midland Railway's philosophy throughout its existence had been to run light, frequent trains and to this end built a large number of moderately dimensioned locomotives for both passenger and freight use. This was carried through when heavier trains were required, the policy being simply to double-head these, a practice which other railways tried to avoid due to the staffing costs. Throughout the Victorian era, the Midland flew in the phase of orthodoxy reintroducing single driving wheeled express engines in the 1890s when other railways were using 440s and introducing very small 440s in the early part of the 20th century when others were building 460s. However, there was a need for more powerful locomotives but in Midland tradition this need was met by increasing the power of the 440s rather than opting for larger engines. There was a practical side to this as larger locomotives would be longer and necessitate changes to the railway infrastructure, notably in the provision of bigger turntables. The railway's chief mechanical engineer, Samuel Johnson, turned to the principle of compounding to get more power from his locomotives. In this, steam is used twice before exhausting to the atmosphere, at first in conventional small high-pressure cylinders and then in larger diameter low-pressure cylinders. The system had been in use in Great Britain with varying degrees of success, notably by the web compounds of the London and Northwestern Railway, unsuccessfully, and didn't have a good reputation. Johnson's design was without doubt the most successful in Great Britain, and the first locomotive, number 2631, was built in 1901. The design was subsequently improved by his successor, Dealey, who added 40 to Johnson's total of just five. 2631 was renumbered 1000 in 1907, and between 1914 and 1919, the original five Johnson engines were rebuilt to conform with the Dealey locomotives that were also being rebuilt with superheaters at that time. Thereafter, all the engines were effectively one class, and the magnificent number 1000, which emerged from Derby Works in 1959, was representative of the final Midland Railway Express locomotive design, rather than an original Johnson engine. Number 1000 had been preserved as part of the British Transport Commission's collection, which was then housed at Clapham Museum in London. There was a movement at the time to preserve locomotives as working examples, which had been started in 1957 when the Great Western City Class engine, City of Truro, had been returned to steam after nearly 25 years as a static museum piece. It's interesting to note that while Number 1000 in its original guise had been built in 1901, the Great Western engine was two years its junior, but the Midland engine went directly from service to a working retirement. Official photographs were taken at Worksworth, the traditional place for Midland Railway photography. This second photographic session took place in front of the local school children, many of whom it was hoped would be railway roundabout viewers. The engine had been taken back to Derby to be turned to allow pictures of both sides. She was finished in the full glory of the Midlands Crimson Lake livery, with that railway's heraldic achievement on the cab sides, topped by the famous Wyvern. Indeed, she was to rise like another mythical bird, the Phoenix, when she returned to steam inside Derby's roundhouse, preparatory to her first trial run from Derby to Leicester. These film shots were taken at slow speed as the light was very low inside the roundhouse.
trial run started from Derby Station. The man on the right is John Scholes, the first curator of the Clapper Museum for the British Transport Commission. The restoration of number 1000 was very much his project, and he was extremely particular in ensuring the magnificent finish was not harmed. The engine was cold by hand and banned from passing under a coaling chute. Pat Whitehouse had the full cooperation of Derby on this trial run and rode in the first coach. Leaning out of the window, he recalls that three people held his legs for these shots. The outward trial finished at Leicester Midland Station. The locomotive was then turned and ran back to Derby, where it was, of course, originally built and rebuilt. The first notable rail tour was run to celebrate the Golden Jubilee of the Stevenson Locomotive Society, or SLS, which was founded in 1909. And the tour started at Birmingham New Street from the Midlands number four platform. The train ran north via Derby Midland, where it paused for photographs, and then carried on to the north via Ambergate, Claycross and Sheffield Midland Station, another photocall. The train's destination was York, where the locomotive was eventually to be housed at the National Railway Museum, which became the successor to Clapham. She was destined for a further spell of mainline working in the early 1980s, but is now retired again alongside the pride of York, the famous Mallard, which was still a mainline locomotive in 1959. Number 1000's mentor, John Scholes, was instrumental in drawing up the famous British Railways list of historical locomotives for eventual preservation, which, of course, included both number 1000 and Mallard. Today, that list forms the backbone of the collection of the National Railway Museum at York, where these locomotives are preserved for the benefit of the nation, along with the railway roundabout films themselves, from which this series of programmes has been prepared.